Buses can be confusing. See, trains run on rails, so where the rails go, the trains go, usually. But since buses drive on the road, they can kind of go anywhere. Detours, deviations, rush hour service, extensions, they're all commonplace. The freedom of the road gives bus companies the freedom to change routes depending on the time of day, which is great for meeting demand, but can make reading a schedule for a first time user a very daunting experience. On the one hand, Chicago has one of the simplest, easiest to use bus systems. Within the city limits, the Chicago Transit Authority's bus system largely follows the street grid. Route 8 runs straight down Halsted Street, Route 66 follows Chicago Avenue, with some turns at the end. In the suburbs, Pace is responsible for bus service. Most Pace routes are also pretty straightforward, even if they're not quite the straight lines that their CTA counterparts are, but as user-friendly as Chicago's simple bus routes are, that's how confusing the complicated ones are. Some of these really make your head spin. Today, I'm going to reveal which route I consider to be the most confusing. It happened to be a route that I used on a daily basis for almost an entire year. So I'll show you many of its interesting features, and I even reached out to the agency themselves to find out just why this route has such a crazy schedule. Now, before I reveal Chicago's most confusing bus route, let's look at the runners up. In third place, we have the CTA Route 206. This bus runs during the rush hours in Evanston, and depending on whether it's the morning or afternoon, it goes a different direction around a loop. In second place is Pace Route 626. This route connects Skokie on the CTA Yellow Line with some northern suburbs, but in the peak direction, buses start at Buffalo Grove Metro Station and then take the highway all the way to Skokie, while in the off-peak direction, they just take the local streets and terminate completely somewhere else. Not exactly sure how that works if you rely on this bus for your commute. Now, let's go ride Chicago's most confusing route. To do so, we need to take a Blue Line train to Rosemont. Rosemont is the second to last station on the CTA Blue Line. Formerly called River Road until the 1990s, Rosemont is the busiest CTA station outside of Chicago city limits. And that's not because it's such a poppin' area in and of itself, but more because of the bus station that is attached to it. Some of these buses bring commuters from the suburbs to Rosemont so they can then take the Blue Line to reach their destinations in downtown Chicago. Others take people from Chicago and bring them to many of the industrial areas that are around O'Hare like the route we're taking today, Route 223. This is actually one of Pace's busier routes. It starts here in Rosemont and then goes around the airport to serve Elk Grove Business Park. Currently it has a ridership of about a thousand people a day, but before the pandemic, that was up to 1,700. Here comes a bus right now. Notice that the sign says East Route. That'll be important later. Pace buses accept venture cards and a single ride costs $2. Here's a tip. For the best seats on the Pace bus, go almost all the way to the back. The second to last row, if you sit by the window, you'll have a ton of leg room. By the way, if you see either my outfits or the weather change a lot during the video, just know that I didn't film this all in one day. I actually filmed this over the course of a year because the 223 was the bus that I took to commute to work while I lived in Chicago. Anyways, about the comfort of these seats, Pace actually has a fleet of buses with very comfortable seats, and I've covered those in a video before. These are not those buses, but they're still not that bad. I prefer the buses with kind of the soft seating with the Pace logo on them, even if that fabric does get a little bit dirtier. It is just a little bit more comfortable, but it doesn't really matter. Otherwise, interior-wise, if it's raining outside, sometimes you might feel a little bit of a drip on you. These Eldorado buses are, how should I put it? not watertight. We begin our trip driving through the village of Rosemont. For some reason, all the cities in the Chicago suburbs call themselves villages. If anybody knows why, I'd love to hear that in the comments. Anyways, actually just a few days ago, I met somebody who was born and raised in Rosemont, and I had to ask them like, 
where did you live? Because all of Rosemont that I've ever really seen are these very wide roads that basically just exist to get people to or from the highways or to like the convention center, the airport, performance venue, stuff like that. After driving through Rosemont, the 223 passes around O'Hare. See, our destination is just on the other side of O'Hare, but of course, you can't just run a bus or a train straight through the airport. So the 223 has to go all the way around the airport via the north side of it. But once we're next to the airport, sometimes you get a chance to get some cool shots of planes. Other times, especially since it's so clear, you'll get a nice view of the sunrise in the mornings. And if you're thinking to yourself, what in the Shrek is that castle looking building? That's the Allstate Arena. Don't worry, the first time I went there for a performance, I thought the same thing. But then I went in and saw one of the best shows I've ever seen in my entire life. Anyways, the 223 first takes Higgins Road, then that turns into Lee Street, which then turns into Tui Street. And so we skirt along the north side of the airport. If you look closely, you'll see several airplanes, and over here we're passing different airport-related facilities. We pass the cargo processing facility, we pass a factory that literally makes the in-flight meals for United Airlines, and the buses get really crowded because at each stop there are many different people that get off to go to work. In fact, in the mornings, the 223 runs every few minutes, but in the middle of the day it goes down to like every hour and then for evening rush about every half hour again. It's very inconsistent, so you do have to check the schedule before you go. And then we approach a railroad track, which looks like today is clear, but I have experienced in the past where a freight train will be crossing, and that can add 30 minutes to your trip. The railroad track, by the way, is owned by Union Pacific. Whenever the wait is really long, I'm always grateful that I picked my favorite seat, because at least I'm not sitting bunched up, am I right? The tracks are clear, we're ready to cross, I'm super late, and once we reach the intersection of Tui and Elmhurst, something interesting happens. Our bus, which as you saw at the beginning of the video said 223 East Route, turns left onto Elmhurst Road. However, had we arrived to Rosemont a few minutes later and gotten on the next 223, this is what the sign would have said. 223 West Route. That's right. Essentially, it's not one route, but three. There's the 223 East and West, which run on weekdays and Saturdays, and then there's the 223X, which is kind of a combination of the two routes that runs on Saturday evenings and Sundays. The buses on the East route turn left onto Elmhurst Road, then turn right onto Devon Avenue, and then left onto Bussy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's really the name of the street. Kind of funny to me. Anyways, it serves several different industrial areas because by now we've arrived in Elk Grove Village. Elk Grove has a small population, only about 30,000, but it is the largest business complex in the United States. We're close to the airport, so that is convenient, but you would not believe how many logistics companies, factories, those kind of businesses are all located here in Elk Grove. Meanwhile, had we taken the west route, we would have turned right onto Elmhurst Road, gone north to Oakton Street, turned left, and then gone all the way down Bussey, serving completely different areas of Elk Grove Business Park. Every single morning, the bus driver has to make sure that people know if they're on the correct bus or not, because otherwise you might miss your office by miles.
At the intersection of Devon and Bussey, the east route turns onto Bussey, and that's where east and west reunite for the last few stops to Tower and Bussey. Tower and Bussey is where the buses turn around. Technically, the last stop on the line, the stop that all the apps will tell you the bus goes to, is the next stop, Tower and Mark. But like I said, Tower and Bussey is where they turn around, and this is where the majority of people who are still on the bus get off. Without any interference from traffic or freight trains, the 223 East route will take about 35 minutes to travel from Rosemont to Tower and Bussey. Meanwhile, the West route takes about 45 minutes, so it is a longer journey. Sometimes in the morning when the buses run super frequently, there will be a West route, and then 10 minutes later there will be an East route, and then the two buses will arrive at Tower and Bussey at the same time. So, I have made it to the intersection of Bussey and Tower Lane. The bus ride took about 35 minutes. We are in the middle of a giant industrial zone. The entire route was just highways, wide strodes, and businesses like this one. And a lot of trucks too. So I'm gonna apologize in advance if I sound very negative here. I just don't think there's that much good to say about this place. We're right on the border between Bensonville, Wooddale, and of course Elk Grove, which we've just been driving through. There's a massive highway here, but not that that would be any different from the regular streets since those are also super wide with giant semi-trucks just barreling through. It's noisy, it smells bad, People just throw their trash everywhere. During my commute, I saw so many people just go to Dunkin', drink their drink, and then throw it on the grass. It was literally too much to pick up by myself. Although I will say the plane spotting here wasn't that bad. I did appreciate getting a nice shot of the British Airways A380 flying over here. But yeah, would I ever come here voluntarily again? Not a chance. Of course, mad respect to people that work here. I used to be one of those people. It just sometimes kind of disappoints me that our human economic productivity has to happen in places that look this devoid of character and that take such poor care of our environment. So the 223 runs pretty frequently throughout most of the day. There's just one small section of about four hours in the midday where they run less than once an hour. Factor in the fact that it's technically two routes, that means that some sections along this line only see a bus uh, once every two hours. Anyway, let's wait for the bus headed back to Rosemont because in a sense, both 223 East and West are kind of a loop. After this, the East and West once again split and take their own routes. Let's do the West route this time since it's a little bit more interesting as it travels up Lively Street. What you'll notice here is that we cross railroad crossing, after railroad crossing, after railroad crossing, after railroad crossing. Oh, and look, another railroad crossing. What is going on? These tracks are all owned by the Chicago Junction Railway, which is a subsidiary of Progress Rail. Basically, it connects to that Union Pacific Main Line that we saw earlier and provides rail access for all these industrial companies in Elk Grove Village. Occasionally, you'll see a little locomotive pushing one or two cars or just kind of running around by itself. It's really one giant shunting operation. Now, the west route goes all the way up lively until we hit Oakton, where we turn right, then we turn onto Higgins, and after we meet up with the east route, we continue the same way we came all the way back to Rosemont. So now you may be wondering, why did I title this video Chicago's Most Confusing Bus? Because of how it's communicated. There are some areas where it's communicated pretty well. 
The signs say E or W or X trips, and on the map that you can find online which covers the entire Chicagoland transit system, the east and the west route are indicated as two separate routes. But it gets worse from here. This is the map that hangs at Rosemont Station showing you all the bus connections, and you can see that east and west are just given the same color, and it looks like half of the east route was just left out altogether. The schedules that are posted at the bus stops do show an E or a W indicating east or west, but if we take a look at the PDF schedule online, the E and the W are placed in very weird, not so obvious places. By the way, taking the west route, eastbound, east route, westbound, like, I don't like it. On paper, yes, it does all make sense, but it's so unnecessarily complicated. It really shouldn't be a hot take that the schedule page for a bus should not have three separate maps on it. But the worst offender is the transit app, which is sad because normally this is a really great app, but for the 223, it just shows it as one route. It doesn't show a W or an E, and you have to click on the bus to see where it will actually go. And I know that it's confusing because every single morning when I would get on the bus, the driver, once we left, would stop, call out, this is the west route, people for the east route, get off and take the next bus, and every single day, at least six or seven people would get off the bus. One time, there was a woman who was riding this for the first time ever, and she actually got very angry at the bus driver, having convinced herself that the bus driver was deliberately avoiding her stop. So granted, she was a little out there, but still, the confusion didn't help. What I would propose is to just renumber either the east or the west route. There's no Route 224 currently, so why not just have the east route be 223 and the west route be 224? I mean, crazier things have happened. In DC, for example, there are two routes, the 42 and the 43. They have the same starting point, same ending point. The only difference is that one of them takes a specific roundabout while the other takes a tunnel underneath the roundabout. If those can be two different lines, I definitely think the 223 should be split up. But it did make me wonder, why aren't they split up? I decided to ask a bus driver, and when they didn't know, I contacted Pace directly. I called them and called right as the entire office was planning to go to one of their coworkers' funeral. My bad. But about a month later, when I had already kind of forgotten about that conversation, I got an email from Pace, and this is what it said. Hi Tom, here's what I was able to pull together for Route 223. Hope this helps. Route 223 E and W were designed that way to better serve the Elk Grove Business Park. Given the size of the business park, a single route couldn't adequately serve it. Yet there were some common segments that would be served we operated multiple routes. So, a single route with branches was developed, and that is a short version of how Route 23 came to be. Changes were made to the route over several years based on trial and error approach. The last major changes were made more than 15 years ago. I don't have a specific date as to what the E and W branches initially came about. Pre-PACE, Nortran operated this route. Their 1978 and 1987 route maps show variations of the east-west routings. Also, the route started at Jefferson Park CTA operating on I-90 to York Road. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't find that the most satisfying answer ever, although I did appreciate the help, and I took a look at that 1978 map that she was talking about, and holy... At least they simplified it a little bit. This is crazy. Now I guess the only real good part of riding this bus every day was the occasional variety that I saw on the buses. I really liked riding this Nortran Heritage livery, Pace has a ton of different Heritage buses, and it's just always fun to get one. They also regularly had a bus with the Wrigley Field Express wrap on it, which is great except of course that the wrap covered the windows, which meant these dots that after 45 minutes would definitely make anybody feel sick. But I think the weirdest thing that ever happened was that one time that I was waiting for the bus and then this showed up. Yes, that is not a blue bus, that is a purple bus, it is in the Pulse livery. Pulse is Pace's BRT si <clears throat> excuse me, Pulse is Pace's BR- I can't say it. Pulse is Pace's enhanced bus service that brands itself as a BRT. And normally these purple, once again, wrapped buses only run on the Pulse routes, but I guess that the fleet is somewhat interchangeable because the 223 is definitely not a Pulse route, but here we are. Back at Rosemont. 
Thank you so much for watching today. This video was all about what I consider to be Chicago's most confusing bus route, the 223, which is made up of the 223 East route, the West route, and the X route. Admittedly, I didn't talk about the X route that much in this video, but I was already on this bus every weekday. I felt absolutely no need to come back on a Sunday as well. Like I said before, I think it would help a lot of people if one of the routes was renamed to the 224. That way it would just be clearer when you're getting on the bus if the bus is actually going to serve the place you need to go. Are there any confusing bus routes where you live? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome, and we'll see you next time.